A little over two years ago, my husband and I purchased this home here in St. Petersburg, Florida. He started work on the inside and I started work on the outside. We did a complete overhaul, both indoors and out, to create an urban homestead right in the middle of the city. We are working on a super small lot. It's only 5,600 square feet, but we have been able to turn it into an abundant oasis. So we're gonna take a walk around my homestead today. I'm gonna to show you what I've had growing and what I've been able to do in just two years time. Our first year was all about compost. Nine yards of compost made right here on site for free and annual vegetable gardens. I wanted quick production. I started our compost planted our gardens, and the day we moved into our house, I was able to harvest our first produce. Annual vegetable gardens give us really, really fast production. Over the past year, uh, I harvested 56 pounds of leafy greens, 56 pounds. We are completely self-sufficient in leafy greens, in herbs, in ginger, in turmeric, uh, black beans. Um, we are heading in the direction, we consume a lot, but heading in the direction for tomatoes, peppers, mushrooms. You can create and grow so much food in a small space. Welcome to my front yard garden. We decided to put our annual vegetable garden in the front of the house because that's where we had the space and the light. Just two years ago, it was technically illegal to have food growing in your front yard. Luckily, the state of Florida changed some laws and it is now completely legal for you to grow food in your front yard. If you're in an HOA, there's still uh, bylaws that you do have to follow and that is a different story. But luckily enough, I don't have to follow those rules. <laughs> As you can see behind me, this is where I grow most of our food. We have six raised beds that I grow in that are three by nine as well as a few container gardens out back. With just that space, I am able to grow a significant amount of annual vegetables all year round. When we first moved to the site, uh, this was where I had the most light. Our backyard was completely shaded. And since I wanted quick production, this is where I put the garden. When I originally did it, our beds were a little too close to the house and three of them got completely shaded in the winter. That summer, we decided to switch things up and we moved them as far away from the house as possible to accommodate the light. Just because you did something doesn't mean you have to stick with it. Change things up and adapt as the situation dictates. We used raised bed gardens. Uh, I even salvaged some materials from a friend of mine and made these awesome PVC planters. You can grow food using anything you've got, even mounted rows on the ground. Everybody can grow food. If you followed along on my channel, I teach vegetable gardening and show people how to grow no matter what their space, whether you have a small urban lot, a lot of acreage, or a tiny apartment balcony. I got these green stalks so that I could show folks exactly how to grow food in a limited amount of space, and I've since fallen in love with them. I have three and I might be expanding even past that. I turned this one into our lettuce mix. So you can come here and harvest all of your lettuces and leafy greens for them. Um, I have this one as a kid friendly, um, hopefully appealing strawberries and sugar snap peas so that my daughter can drop, won't just walk by and pick produce off of the plants. And she knows that this one is free game. We kind of have everything set up to be multifunctional. So even though it serves one purpose, it also serves another. This gives us a little bit of privacy on the patio and it grows us food. You can use things in more than one way. We're also growing a food hedge here soon. So as it fills in, it's going to offer us privacy and food. When you're working in small spaces, you really have to think outside of the box and how you can make things fill multiple roles. So this is going to be our fedge, a food hedge. It is going to offer us privacy and food. We've got an assortment of fruit trees, flowers, ground cover. I've got mulberries growing. I've got 
uh, Cherry of the Rio Grande, I've got Sapodilla, uh, Canistel, uh, we have Potomba as our fruit hedge that gives us privacy. And then down below we have all sorts of native wildflowers. We also have a little bit more food snuck in there. I have sweet potatoes. We have a hedge of sunflowers coming up behind me to give us a little bit of privacy until the food hedge starts to fill in. So if all of those things are completely foreign to you, that is because I select food and fruit trees and everything else that grow really well here in our climate. We can't grow apples, we can't grow pears, which is a bummer, but we can grow all sorts of amazing tropical fruits that do so well here, and I don't have to fight nature to grow them. When we started, there were 40 foot tall sea maho that shaded out the entire backyard. We finally got those removed, and I can't wait for this to fill in and provide us with so much awesome food. I always tell people, grow what you actually eat. For our family and my daughters, that means a lot of fruit. We have over 20 varieties of fruit tree growing on the property. We have um, papaya, we have banana, we have Jamaican cherry. I have a video that goes over seven fast fruiting fruit trees to grow here in Florida. So if you'd like, click the link above and that'll take you over there. But this whole system, our whole yard is set up with permaculture in mind, which means we want to do as little work as possible and have the system maintain itself. That's what this banana circle does for me. It feeds the plants, it creates the moisture, and it grows us delicious food. We used every available space. This here is black pepper. Yeah, like the pepper on your table. We're growing it here, along with a ton of other herbs. We have vanilla growing. We even have plant medicine. We have calendula and elderberry and echinacea. We can deal with minor issues right here on our homestead. Part of less maintenance on my part and that permaculture concept is planting lots of plants that don't actually grow me food. I support pollinators and beneficial insects in the garden by planting lots and lots of flowers. We have gray leaf, we have tropical sage, we have echinacea, we have dotted horsemen, all sorts of things that are in bloom year round so that the good guys are working in the garden for me without me having to do anything. This here is Ethiopian kale. It reseeded itself freely here, which means I didn't have to plant it. I also very rarely water it and it's growing in not nice soil. It's pretty crappy sandy soil underneath some sheet mulch. This is a plant that thrives here in Florida. I'm saving the seed from this because I have an online seed shop that's curated for all varieties that do well here in Florida so that you can find out about things like Ethiopian kale. If you're interested, I have a link in the description below for the seed shop. Compost is key to growing here in Florida. I can't tell you how many times students or clients have tried to grow food unsuccessfully because they planted it directly into our sandy soil. It just doesn't work here. That's why I spent so much of my effort in that first year making quality soil. That's compost. We have a three bin system here so that we can constantly recycle our scraps, decompose them into soil, and do it on a regular and consistent basis. As one bin fills up, we move to the next and the next. By the time that third bin is full, we get to harvest all of the amazing soil from the first one and start it all over again. Within the first year, we also moved past our produce and got chickens. We have our laying hens here for eggs and are completely self-sufficient in eggs for our family and our extended family. We're able to grow some food to supplement them so that they get access to plenty of uh, fresh greens and fun things to scratch around with. And we're able to produce a ton of eggs in a pretty small space. We try to be as self-sufficient or uh, conservative as possible here. Um, we have even saved the water that drips off of our AC line so that we can use it to hand water the plants around the property. We also don't throw any of our food waste into the trash can. It all gets disposed of right here on site. I have a video on that as well, so if you're interested in learning how to reduce your food waste in a small urban setting, make sure to check it out.
Year one was compost. Year two was vermicompost. That's worm castings. I have my worms in a bin here and because of this system, I am able to produce all of the fertilizer that I need to maintain this homestead right in this bin. If you're interested in learning this method, I do have an entire video that goes over exactly how to set up this worm bin. I've also made sure to plant a lot of perennial vegetables. Those are plants that I plant one time and don't have to plant again. They're going to produce food for me season after season and year after year without so much planning and thought from me. There are perennial vegetables like leafy greens. This here is chaya or tree spinach. There's root crops like cassava or sweet potatoes. Obviously, there's all our perennial fruits like blueberries and jujube. There's so many amazing perennial foods that you can incorporate into your yard and save the space in your actual garden for all of the annual vegetables. The beauty of an urban homestead is that it is ever-changing. I am always tucking in a new plant. I am tweaking something that I've already done or making things more sustainable. It never stops. The number one thing that's allowed me to do what I've done here on this site is something that pretty much everybody should do if they're considering converting their suburban lawn into a urban homestead. It is something that takes care of the weeds, builds soil fertility, and gets you growing food fast. If you want to know what it is, check out this video.